Okay, Luke, so this week, uh, let's return to a topic related to uh, our first book. Oh, first yes. Book, yeah, yes. Uh, a Fortunate <laughs> Universe. Um, what? There's a second book? <laughs> there is a second oh, book. Oh, wonderful. You have to stay, talk. stay tuned. Yes. Um, which was on a, uh, about fine-tuning of uh, the laws of physics in the universe for life. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of our favorite chapters, I think, in that book is the, uh, the chapter where we talk about the typical reactions we get. Yep. And we've already mentioned one of those in one of the previous videos. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk today about another sort of reaction or objection we get to this notion of fine-tuning. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is this uh, comment that, you know, we, we've only observed one universe. And in that universe there's life Mm -hmm. therefore surely the probability of life being in this universe is is one one out of one so where's the fine tuning right where do you get this improbability from yeah yeah yeah. so i i think the reason why people think about that is they think of science as driven by observations right and so um but there's got to be a bit more to it than that because otherwise you would just catalog all your observations and then that would be the end of science right? right but that's not what so particularly astronomers like let's think about that so you you take your observations of the night sky um and you get these massive sort of data files but then you don't just leave it at that you know just go we took a pretty picture of the night sky you actually try and understand theoretical models about why are there spiral arms in galaxies why are there flat galaxies and round galaxies and all that sort of stuff that's why it's astrophysics astrophysics indeed so within physics we don't want to just look at the way the universe is we want to know why it is the way it is and that involves theory and, and testing theories and all that sort of stuff so so science isn't just looking at the universe and it's not just theory either. You can't just make up some story of the universe and then just happy with that. Science happens when you sort of guess the way the universe might be like and then you go and check. You've got to bring those two together. You've got to bring it together. And so fine-tuning is something weird we've noticed about the things on the theory side. Um, and in particular, you know, when we, when we examine our theories, there's something odd going on there. Okay. So in particular, we, we want our theories to explain the universe in a nice and natural and neat and not jerry-rigged way. Um, and it, it seems like they're not doing that. In particular, there are these, you know, this is fine-tuning. There are these numbers. And if you change them, some of them, a little bit, these are fundamental numbers, which means that we have no deeper understanding why they are what they are, but we can measure them. And you change them a little bit. And the universe is not just different, but that's almost certainly true but it's different in a way which would not permit the existence of life um one of the one of the the fallacies underneath this objection you know the number of life permitting universe is one out of one one of the fallacies is people say once you've observed something the probability of that thing is one um and that's clearly not how probabilities work um, can we think of an, an example? So the problem with that is any, you know, whenever you did an experiment, you couldn't use probabilities to analyze that experiment or come to any sort of probabilistic conclusions because all you could say is the outcome of the experiment happened, so the probability of that outcome was one out of one. The crucial thing behind the scenes here, and this is something that our good friend uh, Brendan Brewer constantly reminds us of, is that probabilities don't just depend on the outcome you're looking at. They depend on the hypothesis that you're testing. In particular, they depend on the assumptions you make about how that outcome happened. And so if you say, what's the probability that the, uh, you know, let, let's, let's consider a crime scene or something. What's the probability that the fingerprint on the door would match the fingerprint of the defendant? And what you don't do is say, well, it does match the defendant, so the probability is one. That's just not <laughs> a useful. If that's all probability was, it would be completely useless to, to all of science. What we want to know is, okay, assuming that the defendant is innocent, right, and n- nothing else, what would we, you know, and, and the, uh, you know, just some other background information. Assuming the defendant is innocent, that's our one, that's our one hypothesis. What's the probability that their fingerprint ends up on the door? Versus assuming they're guilty, what's the probability that, end, that the fingerprint ends up on the door? And so um, you can see those playing, playing out in certain ways. If this was, you know, 
if this was so suppose it is actually your office and someone's robbed something and they say they're, they're looking at me about this and they say well you know if Luke was innocent what's the probability that his fingerprint would be on the door I could say I was in here recording a podcast last week and so actually that's not yeah. you know, unlikely whereas just some random bloke on the street if they were worried about whether they were there's no reason for their um, fingerprint to be on the door if they're innocent yeah, so yeah, so it depends on the hypothesis. That's right. So so your, your fingerprint example is a, is a cool one, right? Because um, you know, in 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 that thing of you saying uh, it, probability of one of being your fingerprint, what we've assumed there, of course, is that you have a unique fingerprint sure. as well, right? Yeah. I mean, but you know, we could live in a place where everybody has exactly the same fingerprints. Is, is the probability <laughs> of it being you then still one? Yeah. You need to worry about all of that background stuff, right? It's, you just can't ignore yeah. it. So in particular, um, if we were just happy to say of, of the standard model of particle physics and the standard story of cosmology as we have it now, and which have these numbers in them, if we were all happy to say, that's it, we're done, physics is over, that's your universe, deal with it. If, that were f if you were happy to say that, then maybe you would be in a circumstance where you, you, you'd say, all right, asking for the probabilities of these this particular arrangement this particular set of of fundamental things about the universe i wouldn't you wouldn't even say it's one you just say there's no point asking that question uh, or something like that so um you you've just you've, you've just gone beyond the limits of where you'd, you'd ask for that sort of probability but i mean no one thinks this is the final story and so in particular you, you might think, oh, well, what if there was... What if what we think of as, say, the mass of the electron isn't actually this, you know, carved in granite number from the beginning of the universe? What if it's just something that's different over there and over there and over here? And then you would ask the question, all right, what's the probability that a certain bit of the universe gets an electron mass that allows for life? And then you, what you don't say is, oh, one, because we observed that the electron... No, 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 no. You've got modelling to do and you can actually see if you can understand something. And so it's precisely because we're, we're up against a theory which we might think is incomplete on, on purely physical grounds. There's more to be told about the universe. Or even sort of beyond that, we, we discussed in the last chapter of the book, like the simulation hypothesis. Maybe, maybe our universe is actually a simulation of some higher up, whatever. Um, even if you're thinking about that hypothesis, what's the chances that they would produce this universe rather than some other one? There's clearly a scenario in which we want to start asking whether this these this this universe we have is in some sense more likely or less likely. And in particular, just like the fingerprint, um, the probability changes whether they're guilty or innocent for a particular person. We want to explore the assumptions we might be able to make about the universe which make its um, seemingly rare life-friendly properties more likely or less likely. We're trying to explore that theory space. Yeah. And so just saying, oh, it's, it's true, so it's, the probability is one. All that says is, is it, is it possible that the uni this universe exists? And it does. So yes, that, <laughs> that probability is one. Absolutely. Congratulations. We want to do better. Uh, before we finish, this just um, a bit of advice. Any younger people out there wanting to study science at university, etc., learn probability, it, and it, learn learn like modern modern probability. A lot of ba Bayesian probability. Bayesian probability. Yeah. So um, I actually did this study. If you look at uh, um, there was a time in the like no, so there's a, a great book on this by Edward Edwin James James J A Y N E S. Where, where he says one of his students, because he was into Bayesian probability, oh, I can see it over there. Um, one of his students in the seventies was off was 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 hired by some other department to teach probability theory, and they knew about all this this Bayesian stuff. And they said, "All right, here's the textbook. You you teach that, and you forget about all this other Bayesian stuff. You can do that in your own private <laughs> private time. You can do that on Sundays, but in the week." Um, that 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 view of Bayesianism has completely turned around. So there are now, I, I think last time I checked, there are sort of 8,000 papers in physics and astronomy which have Bayesian in the title of the paper. Uh, and so there's been, there's a much sort of nicer, richer, more rigorous, more useful toolkit yeah. that we can apply to probabilities uh, more than what was done in the, in the from the 30s to the 70s even before which is just you know you're counting fractions of, of outcomes and I should, should mention it's one of my little um, 
little hobby horses here kind of thing is is that people talk about science and when you do science at university you have theory and you have experiment and observation mm -hmm. the way you join them the way you do science yeah how you hold theory up to observation is through bayesian statistics yeah learn probability yeah it i mean as we were saying before that's that's where these two halves come together um and so uh you know when theory and observation come together that's what science is doing so that's you're right that that is the toolkit we use